Hello world! In the last couple of years, I've made quite a few videos on Wi-Fi related shenanigans. You could say it's become quite a bit of an obsession. Well, it doesn't look like that's ending anytime soon, because today I'm only adding to the list. One of my favourite things I've played around with is Ponagotchi. Ponagotchi turned a Raspberry Pi Zero into a Wi-Fi hungry Tamagotchi. He'd deauthenticate devices from Wi-Fi networks, wait until they reconnected, grab the handshake, which just so happens to include the network's password hash, and all of this would make that Ponagotchi thing really happy for all of 30 seconds until he'd inevitably get hungry again and demand you take him somewhere else with new Wi-Fi networks to feed on. Well now, well now, well now, there is a new kid on the block. Hashmonster aims to incorporate much of Ponagotchi's functionality, but instead of running on a Raspberry Pi, he runs on an ESP32, and is specifically designed to run on an M5 stack. Now, I'm not going to go too much into detail into explaining what an M5 stack is, because it is a bit of a rabbit hole to be honest, but essentially it is a Wi-Fi development board powered by an ESP32. It has a ton of sensors in it, as well as a display some buttons, and a bunch of I.O., meaning you can attach these expansion modules to them. They've rather eloquently named these expansion modules Bottoms. Now, this is the default bottom. It has some extra I.O. and a 110 milliamp hour battery hidden within there somewhere. Now, here is a more premium, thicker bottom, which has a 500 milliamp hour battery hidden within it. On Amazon, an M5 stack core, that's that's the main bit, goes for about 30 spondulix. Slightly less, but not by much on AliExpress. Though living in the UK, I can get a Pi Zero W for about a tenner. Though I do realise they can be quite pricey and hard to get elsewhere in the world. So where you are, an M5 stack may be competitively priced. Particularly when you take into account it comes with a display and a battery, something the Pi Zero simply doesn't. But anyway, but anyway, back to the M5 stack itself. It can do a hell of a lot more than just run HashMonster, which we will eventually get to in a moment, I promise. You can also play some ancient retro games on it, such as Tetris or Flappy Bird. Oh, for f but anyway, but anyway, you're here to see HashMonster, so let's let's get it installed. You'll need to download the HashMonster GitHub repo, link in description, install the relevant Arduino libraries, also link in description, plug in your M5 stack via its Type-C port, very cool, very cool, make sure the upload settings are correct, and hit upload. Arduino being Arduino, this may take a few minutes to compile and upload. Once it's done, however, your M5 stack will need you to insert a microSD card. Now, the microSD card is used for storing the PCAP files, which contain the Wi-Fi password hashes of the networks HashMonster has sniffed. Oh, and by the way, at this point, you can of course unplug the M5 stack and just use the internal battery, if you have one of those bottoms with a battery. Once booted up, you'll get a little something like this. Now, the interface is really very simple. Everything takes place on this screen. There aren't any other menus or anything like that. The GitHub repo has a pretty good picture of what all the numbers mean and what the buttons do. Essentially, just like the Ponagotchi, in the corner here, you have your hash monster. He looks pretty fed up right now, and that's because he hasn't sniffed any handshakes, denoted by the number in the bottom right. The green bars relate to the amount of Wi-Fi traffic HashMonster has detected. It varies quite a lot because, as you can see, he's channel hopping every few seconds. And some channels are simply busier than others. Depending on the Wi-Fi traffic in your vicinity, it could take quite a while to pick up any password hashes. Remember, he grabs a password hash when he detects a four-way handshake. A four-way handshake is initiated when a device connects to a network. So that's what he's waiting for, a device to connect to a network, sniff the hash, and there you go. So I'll manufacture a deauth attack using my deauther here to simulate what happens when this guy has been running for a while. So my iPhone is connected to Impulse. I'll go ahead and run that deauthentication attack on that network, and my iPhone disconnects. Nothing on the hash monster yet, because he's sniffing the wrong channel. If I move him to the correct channel, you can see a crazy amount of traffic. A load of deauthentication frames are picked up in red, and his facial expression changes from a rather gloomy one, and suddenly he's in love with, 
with the packets, I suppose. But anyway, at this point, he should have picked up some password hashes for us to crack. Plopping the SD card into a computer gives us these PCAP files. For some reason, there's a bunch of empty ones, but these two here should contain our four-way handshakes to crack. Now, I'm not going to cover cracking in this video because I've already made videos on that, which I shall link in the description. One of the main differences between HashMonster and Ponagotchi is that Ponagotchi actively deauthenticates clients from a network, allowing it to sniff handshakes a hell of a lot faster. HashMonster simply can't do this due to hardware limitations, so it just has to sit idly by, passively waiting for handshakes to sniff. Also, HashMonster simply isn't quite as sophisticated as Ponagotchi, though this might be a bonus for you if you simply just don't want to have to deal with the overheads that come with running a whole Linux machine. If you're looking for something to watch next, I highly suggest checking out my previous video on the wireless bad USB I've got coming out in a week or two. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can sign up for an email notification when it goes live on my website, maltronics.com. There will be a bit of a delay between when it goes live and when I post a video about it on YouTube, so make sure to sign up to the email notification if you want to be notified ASAP when it goes live. So with that, I shall leave you. If you want to keep up with what's going on behind the scenes, make sure to follow me on Instagram. But anyhow guys, make sure to subscribe for more hacking videos and have a good one.